All right, well, yeah, it's beautiful Kilkenny and it's beautiful All Ireland final week, and the build up has very much started in earnest. And it's a, it's a familiar lineup considering it was last year's lineup. I'm delighted to have Kieran Cuddihy, one of our, our finest news talk presenters, the hard shoulder, of course. Weekdays, four to seven, and a Kilkenny man as well. How are you keeping? Yeah, I'm not too bad, yeah. How are you? I'm keeping well. Do yeah, you get to. You're do, over last weekend, oh, you've recovered. I didn't want to bring that up, but sure, listen, listen. we're here. Um, hopefully, from your point of view, Kilkenny fans won't feel that pain that I feel uh, this <laughs> week, next week. How do you generally feel on All Ireland final weekend or weeks? Are you nervous? Um, I would be a bit nervous. Yeah, I get kind of nervous on the day. All right, get a bit quiet. I don't really say an awful lot. Um, but I'm I'm a little less nervous this year than last year. Uh, I think he'll, I you know if you're offered evens odds, I think you'd be still putting your money on Limerick, of course. Um, but I think Kenny are a bit better, and I think Limerick are. A little bit worse mm. now. They were brilliant against Galway. I was more confident uh, before that semi-final, um, but I still think they've probably come back a bit. And Kenny have improved a bit. So I mean, last year I was really nervous because my fear last year wasn't that we'd lose. I, my fear was that we'd get hammered. You know, yeah. they just get hammered. I thought that was that possibility that it, it might be like Kenny and Waterford in 08 or something like that. And I really, really didn't want to have to face that. Um, like, look, and as it was. You know, we could have won on the day, um, but uh, so I'm 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 not worried about that. I don't think they make a hammer to Kenny this year. They look, they might turn it on and they might kind of run out comfortable enough winners in the end. But once the risk of absolute annihilation is off the yeah, is off the table, yeah. which I think it is, I'm slightly less nervous. Yeah, it feels like the the rest of the gap, the rest of the field have closed the gap on Limerick for sure in the last mm. year or two. Like I don't think Limerick before the semi had won a match by more than two points. So like and the Kenny. Rightly after the semi-final performance, a lot of people wrote them off and were like, "Oh, this will be a repeat of the Munster final." Kilkenny, or uh, Clare and Limerick, but Kenny have been impressive this year. Like, and first year for Derek Ling as well. So he's been he's been brilliant. Yeah, no, they have, and uh, you know, I, I think there was maybe an expectation earlier in the year that TJ maybe maybe wouldn't have the same impact on matches that he had in the past, and he certainly looked very sluggish when he, he came back was it against Leash or Dublin over mm. in Nolan Park um, w- when he kind of came back from injury first of all and it, you know he's turned it on really he's just incredible he's absolutely incredible you know but listen Owen Cody has been uh, like has been immense in, in in so many games as well I think Mossy Keown has been brilliant in the four as well he's just one of these lads who's just an absolute workhorse mm. you know you need lads like that um, uh, as well so yeah they can any have they've They've, they've definitely closed the gap. Limerick, I mean, yeah, the fear, though, you have about Limerick is, is again, is that, you know, when, when they fire on all cylinders, when all their players are playing well, you, you'll get what you got against Galway, where they do get a little untouchable again. You know, they still have that about them. You know, there's a lot of games this year. Aaron Galan, I mean, I know the All-Ireland will have a lot to say mm. uh, in this, but it's hard to imagine him not being hurler of the year at this stage. That's Cody, unless it's Kenny Wynn. Yeah, and Cody's it, Kenny Wynn and own Cody as the game of his life again, or a man of the match, maybe it's him, you know. But at this point, you'd have to say it's Aaron Galan. He's just been so good. Like, in all those games you mentioned that where Limerick kind of fell over the line, I mean, he was just a lonely, lonely warrior up front for them uh, 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 for such long periods. So he's been brilliant, but then the others turn it on. And, they do. Uh, I mean, then, then you're into kind of problem territory. Uh, tell us about your, your so your Dixborough club in, in Kenny. Yeah. So what's the maybe tell us a little bit about the club your own. I know you're still you're still playing. You're still coaching. No. Well, I'm I'm involved with the kids. Yeah, the uh, underage camogie and uh, hurling under under nines hurling under eights camogie. So uh, well, Tommy Welsh tells us it's the, the big deal. It's, that is the big he gets deal. more nervous with those games than Kenny games. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I'm not sure I do get <laughs> necessarily that nervous about them. Um, but uh, yeah, the club is is well, sure, it's around for about 110 years and one of the three city clubs in town. Um, and I guess traditionally James Stevens, the village, which would be the most well known of the three city clubs, that was the big club. And there would have been periods where it was kind of effectively the only senior club. So mm. if you go back in time, there would have been people hurt in junior with ourselves and O'Loughlin's and maybe they, you know, they would have gone on and maybe played senior. With, they would, would have moved to the village. Right. It was kind of you know their senior club um but that hasn't been the way now in a long time there's three good senior clubs uh in town uh between the three uh, between the village of Lockens and ourselves and you know look we're we're a good club we haven't necessarily had great success at senior level we won a county championship in 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 2016 you to go back to 93 before that um you know when people in town if you ask people from other clubs about the borough they might be say they, they kind of 
their underage success hasn't translated. So we've had very, very, very good underage teams, good failure teams, won the failure now a couple of times uh, in the last few years. Um, but we're still waiting for that to translate to... It just doesn't... That, it doesn't necessarily... You know, you can have teams that win everything the whole way up and they won't necessarily do it at senior level. It's a big, big change. I, I even know in Monaghan, like, the, the clubs that are very close geographically together are often the biggest rivals. It's probably the same in a lot of counties. Like, are those three city clubs massive hatred-filled rivalries or are they more friendly? Um, no, the other two are just full of scumbags, the other two, <laughs> two clubs. No. You're completely unbiased, yeah. obviously, yeah. Um, no, I know, look, there, there's a great rivalry between them. There really, really is. Um, you know, they, they all three have been kind of uh, fairly consistently since the kind of... Uh, uh, late 90s senior we went down intermediate a couple of times kind of bounced straight back up mm. um, a few years ago but they've you know so, they, so they've been playing each other kind of fairly consistently and no there is there's all, there is a great rivalry but listen Kenny's a small place it, cause it can't, so it can't really be a hate filled rivalry because you know, there's no point the lad you're hating is you know probably your brother-in-law or something you meet him down the pub or something yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that type of thing <laughs> so everyone is working together or going to school together um, it's not big enough that you can completely isolate yourself from, from yeah. people from much as I wish I could isolate myself from people in Old Auckland's or, or the village. I can't. Um, so it's it's not hateful, but it's good. There's a good rivalry between the city clubs. What was your what was your opening? Oh, Kenny fans have so many All Ireland final memories. I'm jealous of them. But like, what what was your first All Ireland final memory? Do you remember going to All Ireland finals as a kid? And, and that's yeah, sort of like... ninety two was the first right, time yeah. I went up. Uh, I didn't go up in ninety one. Obviously, we lost the tip in ninety one, um, and I would have been eight years old. Um, my, my dad was the doctor with the county team right. at the time, so I would have been to a lot of uh, matches up until All Ireland final. But we wouldn't have maybe gone on the day because my mother would have had to bring four kids on her own because my dad was and I was the eldest, so they were you know yeah. it was just would have been a nightmare because my dad was on the sideline. So it wasn't until '92 uh, that that uh, we went, and then obviously we were there in in '92, '93, '94. Uh, Can we all see All Ireland '94? You said a few in a row there, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, and then obviously then that great team through the uh, from 2000 onwards. Well, from 99 onwards. I yeah. mean, we should have won it in 99. Cork <laughs> robbed us. Yeah. Let's just get that down on the record now. Cork absolutely robbed us. But anyway, um, there's your headline. Yeah. Um, so listen. Um, so that was the first memory. I, but because my dad was, like, we would have gone to these matches. I remember being down in Six Mile Bridge at a league match in February, and there was like three people at it. There was genuinely, it was, it was like sideways. It wasn't like a Kenny football match, was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd get more at a Kenny yeah. football match these days. But, you know, there was like sideways rain and sleet and it was horrible, horrible stuff. Um, so we would have trudged all over the uh, the country. But it was great uh, having him as the doctor with the team. You kind of felt like you were, you were kind of within touching distance of these players. You know, they would call to the house to get stitches or whatever, oh, you know. Yeah. And the, the doorbell would ring during the dinner and like it'd be, you know, DJ Carey or Pat O'Neill or someone would be at the door, or Bill Hennessy, you know, looking for a few stitches, which is great. Would great you be getting case. signatures or, or signed hurlies or anything? Or are you just... Li- oh, yeah. Now, the, you know, nowadays, um, you, you talk to lads involved in county. I'm sure it's the same Monaghan or anywhere else. Every training session, like, part of it seems to be that a hurl or a jersey goes around the room and gets signed. I don't think that happened quite as often yeah. um, years ago. But yeah, no, certainly we would have had, you had had everything signed. Uh, you know, you had a jersey signed, you would have hurled signed, uh, hurling balls, ash guards. Remember ash guards right, when we yeah. came a thing for a while? Um, the glove, micro make them now, but the, the ash guard was the, the original one. People would have got their ash guard signed as well <laughs> by players. So yeah. You and your arm gone. as well, of course, as yeah. a kid. You have to get everything. cast, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that was a great course. thing. Yeah. Your DJ sign your cast. Were you, were you St. Kieran's College? or what was your uh, CBS CBS yeah so uh, Kieran's obviously were the the big hurling academy um, in town uh, by the time I started school they weren't a boarding school anymore so so the the, the, the dominance had, mm-hmm. had ebbed a bit and there's probably more of a rivalry I think possibly when I started school the rivalry was more in our heads in CBS than it was in reality you know consistently Kieran's were winning uh, you know all Ireland's uh, and Leinster Colleges and we weren't yeah, but that's changed, and so again, yeah, it's a good rivalry between. But that was the end of the boarding because they would have sucked a lot of lads in from Tip. I guess one of the last uh, uh, kind of boarders that would have had a huge impact, like Own Kelly, would have come in. Yes. So that Own Kelly would have been from Tip would have been on that team um, in Kieran's with you know Jackie Terrell and Tommy Walsh uh, oh, yeah. and all of those lads. So it's like a Declan Rice Jack Reeler situation. They were kind of Galacticos, basically. <laughs> yeah. It was disgraceful going around hoovering up all these players yeah. from every other county. Yeah. Okay, before we let you go. Uh, 
I know it's, this is a tough one, especially when your own county is involved, but predictions, uh, how do you see the game playing out? Um, oh, head, head says Limerick, as I said earlier. I mean, you're just, the smart money would have to go on them by a few points. It feels, they feel like, I'd love to see Kilkenny do it. It feels a little like 2009, um, when Kilkenny won the four in a row and fell over the line, and not only fell over the line, they fi- fell over the line right throughout that year. They kind of, you know, yeah. um, they just muscle memory winning is a habit. However you want to describe it, they kind of won games they shouldn't have won. <laughs> Limerick have been doing that this year, so there's, I feel there's kind of there's echoes of that Kilkenny uh, 09 team about us, um, about this Limerick team. So, oh, much as it pains me to say it, I think Limerick will do it. Heart and head. I was going to say enjoy the match. It's tough to enjoy the match when your caddy's involved, but. Try best to enjoy it. I will. I will. I'll try. I'll try. Thank you, Shane. Cheers, Karen.